Hello world, my name is Andy Silvers, yada yada yada. We're going to talk about the Dell Optiplex. Alright, so this is one of my first videos that isn't really a review. Instead, we're going to be talking about the Dell Optiplex 7050 Micro. It's a 1 liter PC. It is designed for schools, offices, and any other situation where you need a small form factor desktop. It has most of the features you'd expect from a larger desktop, including a fairly reasonable amount of I.O. on the front and the back. It has a reasonable amount of upgradability, including storage, RAM, CPU, Wi-Fi card, and a few other things. Now, this is not a review since the Dell Optiplex 7050 Micro here came out over half a decade ago. The reason is because it has a 7th gen Intel Core i7-7700T. Why am I talking about it? Well, the used market for desktops and laptops, but especially desktops due to their upgradability, uh, is pretty high. So I purchased this Dell Optiplex desktop from eBay. Uh, for right around $180, a little over $200 with tax. And uh, it seemed like a good deal at the time, but it was indeed not a great deal. But instead of making this video a pity party, where I simply talk about how miserable I am because the computer I got wasn't what I thought I was getting, instead, we're going to turn this video into an experiment where I see if I can quote unquote upgrade this computer, or in some ways more accurately, upgrade this computer. This desktop over here is an HP ProDesk business desktop. It's a lot bigger, but it has an Intel 6th gen i5 CP CPU, the 6400. But unfortunately, the sales for this device, the listing on eBay, so far as I can tell, did not mention the massive, massive downside of purchasing this product. So this video is not only an experiment in upgrading or CPU swapping, but it's also a lesson to teach you about purchasing used hardware on the internet. Before I go any further, I want to say that this channel is not currently monetized. So if you want to support me, uh, you can obviously like and subscribe to the channel. That helps me quite a bit. However, if you want to support me more directly, please consider going to the link in the video description. I am an author as well as YouTuber. I have three books currently available. Uh, they're all available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart's website, basically any e-store that sells uh, books. So please check those out. Some of them, are, two of them are for kids, and uh, one of them is for teens and adults. If you're wondering if you'll like that one, it's, um, it's basically like the recent Marvel movies. So it is basically PG-13. There's a lot of fun, a lot of action, a lot of great humor. It's just a fun all-around time. So please check those out. It really helps support me and the channel. All right, so this is the Dell Optiplex 7050 Micro PC. It is one of a lineup of Dell desktop PCs. This one is a business class uh, product. It is a one liter PC, which means that it crams everything into a teeny tiny form factor. It does not have a dedicated graphics card, but it does have eight gigabytes of RAM. It has a 256 gigabyte SSD, uh, traditional uh, NVMe SSD. I believe PCIe Gen 3, and it has an external power supply. So most desktops like that one right there have an internal PSU, power supply unit. This one is so small, however, that the power supply unit is provided by a big brick, a power brick, kind of like you would have for your laptop that you plug in here. This desktop, luckily being really small, means you probably can get away with a 65 watt brick. However, the eBay listing I got this one from does not include it. Now, at some point in the video soon, we will be opening up and I will allow you to see the inside and take a look at the expansion, upgradability, and interior design of the layout. But first, I want to get to the big elephant in the room regarding this product. This product is nice on the surface. It has an Intel i7-7700T CPU uh, with uh, Intel uh, integrated graphics. As I say, there's no dedicated graphics here. Uh, and that CPU has four cores and eight threads and uses Intel's uh, 14 nanometer uh, lithography or architecture. But the problem is uh, at, a, at the BIOS level, and this is not the 
seller's fault. It is Dell's fault or Dell's decision uh, what they did with this particular product. So the CPU in this device is not a fantastic CPU, but it is pretty good. It's a desktop CPU, and you might be wondering what the T at the end stands for. So basically, the Intel letters are a bit confusing, but T refers to, and it still does to this day, any Intel desktop CPU that is a quote-unquote lower power draw. So you'll see this in all-in-one computers quite a bit. You can see right now the specs on the screen for this particular device, or more accurately, the CPU. You can see the core count and more important. You can see the core count, and more importantly, you can see the turbo boost frequency. So this device is supposed to have a reasonable base and boost clock. Nothing extraordinary, but you know, reasonable. Unfortunately, it does not because the CPU in this device, in the BIOS, is, is locked to 0.8 gigahertz all core. Not 1.8, 0.8 gigahertz all core, which is garbage. Now, I understand maybe Dell thought, well, the cooler in here can't possibly cool it if we give it, say, you know, the, the normal amount, if we give it the full 35 watts or so of power. But if that's the case, they shouldn't have put a desktop CPU in here in the first place. They should have put a mobile, whatever the mobile 7th gen, maybe like a 75U or 7500U CPU perhaps. Because it is an utter waste to put a mid-tier desktop CPU in this device if it is not even remotely capable of running at the... Even the, even the base frequency, forget about turbo boost, it can't even run at the base frequency. It runs pretty much in perpetuity at 0 0.8 gigahertz, which is awful. So uh, I wanted to warn you about that because in the listing for the product, it does not mention this anywhere. And in theory, he didn't have to mention it, but in you know for the sake of transparency, the seller should have. Because the listing features the CPU and tells you the specs of the CPU, which are accurate, but Dell has locked the CPU in the BIOS to 0 0.8 gigahertz. And I have found this for other devices. If you search the internet for this issue, there are some other devices from OEMs that have this issue. And again, it's not an accident, quote unquote, it's intentional. Dell has done this presumably to reduce power consumption or more likely to reduce thermals, to reduce heat. But again, if the CPU cooler included can't cool the CPU, they should have just put a different CPU in here. They should not have advertised how amazing it was for a desktop CPU to be in here if it can't be cooled. Just a second, we're going to open up this micro PC to see what's inside, but I want to prepare you for what's to come. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the CPU out of this computer and put it in that one and vice versa. Put the CPU from there into here. The reason for this is because if this motherboard is what's causing the issue, and it is, it is a BIOS level thing that, that Dell themselves has uh, put on here, then I don't want to let this reasonably good CPU go to waste in a, in a chassis, if you will, that isn't taking advantage of it. So I'm going to try to take the CPU out of here and put it into there, into that uh, HP ProDesk desktop and of course put that CPU in here because that CPU is 6th gen which means that it's not as powerful plus it's an i5 it's not as powerful as the CPU in here so if this CPU can work in that PC it can really extend the life and usability of that PC and it doesn't really matter if you're putting a worse CPU in this PC because you weren't getting good performance anyway so that's what I'm going to be doing now there's a lot of ways that this could go wrong a lot of reasons this might not work uh, one of the biggest ones being that it is theoretically possible that the CPU in this device is quote-unquote vendor locked. So for instance, if you were to buy a Lenovo P620, which is an extremely high-end desktop, with the Ryzen Threadripper Pro CPU in it, the third gen or the fifth gen of those, uh, if you try to take that, that Threadripper Pro out and sell it or something, you have to be very careful because that CPU is vendor locked to Lenovo motherboards. So it will not work if you try to put it into, say, a super micro desktop that supports that socket, but 
it just won't it won't work. It just won't boot up. So it is theoretically possible that maybe if I take the CPU out of here and put it in there, it just won't do anything because it's possible that it's vendor locked to the Dell motherboard that's inside of this this uh, chassis here. All right, so now I've opened up the micro one liter PC. Inside we have this right here, which is a hard drive and or SATA SSD uh, holder. And of course the actual drive would slot right in here into this slot. There is an NVMe SSD right here in this slot. And there is also a WLAN, meaning Wi-Fi card slot right here. It's upgradable. There's the CMOS battery. Here's the cooling fan for the CPU. All right, so we're going to pull this whole unit up a little bit here. Pull this up. You can see that there are two RAM slots. Only one of the RAM slots is currently occupied mm -hmm. with an 8 gig 2400 mega transfer per second stick of sodium laptop memory. However, this right here is where we want to focus our attention. This is the cooler for the CPU. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take that off in order to swap CPUs out. Uh, at some point later in the video, uh, I will show the process of taking the CPU out of the larger HP uh, computer. So it looks like these are captive screws, meaning that they don't come all the way out, which is usually a good thing because it helps mean you're not likely to lose them during what is effectively a pretty technical process. So I'll show you a close up here. I can so you can see here the built-in cooler for the chip right here. It's a pretty basic cooler, not very advanced, but it doesn't need to be. Although it should be a little bit better because, of course, um, Dell, like I said, they downclocked the CPU significantly which is one of the reasons I'm even having to do this operation. Um, I want to note that I do take responsibility for not having checked the device's specs, or, or not having actually looked into the task manager and or the BIOS to really see that this problem even existed because a cursory glance would have allowed me to see pretty clearly and easily that this was indeed an issue. Um, so that's something I should have done. Um, but it's also true that the seller should have disclosed the down clock of the device. So here is a close-up of our CPU. It is indeed an i7 Intel 7700T with four cores and eight threads. All right, so now I have the HP ProDesk desktop opened up. It's a completely different layout, obviously since it's a larger desktop, and it is actually a business class desktop. I was surprised to see that the power supply here was uh, 80 plus platinum. That was a surprise, a pleasant surprise, that it wasn't the cheapest possible power supply, especially since it's an HP power supply, meaning that they, they created it and uh, have put it inside of here. So here's the CPU. Uh, fan cooling mechanism for this device. Um, like with the smaller one, it's not exactly the most amazing uh, mechanism, but it doesn't need to be, per se, because HP never intended on you having a crazy powerful CPU in here in the first place. Okay, so here's the Intel CPU cooler for the HP ProDesk desktop. Again, fairly bog standard, but slightly better in terms of thermal mass, presumably, than the other one in the Dell Mini PC. All right. 
right, and here is the CPU. Uh, as you can see, it's covered in a lot of thermal goop, and it actually might even be upside down. I can't tell for sure because there's so much thermal goop on there, which was not the case for the uh, other CPU. The other CPU uh, did not have a lot of thermal goop on it at all, probably uh, because... Uh, Dell figured they didn't even need to put a bunch of thermal goop on there because the heat transfer would be so minimal since they downclocked it so significantly. So uh, I'm never going to get over that. I'm still salty about that, but uh, you'll have to excuse me for being salty. While this exciting footage plays, I want to let y'all know that I tested the Dell Micro PC with the original 7700T CPU in Cinebench R23 multi-core. And the score should be roughly four to 5,000-ish multi-core, but I only got about 1,000. While doing that, it pulled about four watts of power, the CPU specifically, which is extremely low. I mean, it's a 35-watt CPU. I downloaded Throttle Stop and increased the voltage significantly. And while that did improve the score slightly and improve the power draw to about eight watts, that's still extremely low. I also want to make a very clear note at this point in the video that vendor locking does not necessarily mean locking the gigahertz frequency of the CPU. Vendor locking just means that the CPU can only be used on a certain motherboard. The fact that Dell locked the gigahertz of the CPU is a separate issue. So as you can see, I put the CPU from the big desktop into the tiny one and it booted up straight away. No issues, everything works fine. The CPU is detected. It is not running at the proper clock speed, but it is detected, which is what I was looking for. However, the 7700T, when I put it in the big HP desktop, did not work at all. I even tried removing the ISO battery for about 7 to 10 minutes and putting it back in and still nothing happened. On the motherboard, there is a small green light. However, I didn't check before the CPU swap to see if that same light was on. It's possible that something is malfunctioning uh, on the motherboard. Uh, however, I think the most likely culprit is just that the CPU is vendor locked to the Dell. I will have to do further tests in another video. And uh, you might be asking why I don't have a conclusive result for you now. Well, mostly that's kind of the point. I wanted to know if this process was plug and play. You take a CPU out, put another one in. And on the mini desktop it was because again, it was able to work. But there's a chance that the big desktop is uh, now not going to work ever because that 7700T is vendor locked. And in fact, there's actually a theoretical chance that the, the CPU in the little desktop, which is that old 60, 6600 um, i5, it, there's a chance now that one won't work anywhere because now that one might be vendor locked. Uh, I don't know that for sure, uh, but it's possible. So it's an interesting test. Uh, I will post in the comments if I have any updates on this project, but for now, what you need to know in, is what I took away, which is that when you buy a used PC, off the internet, especially if it's in a one liter form factor, please message either on Facebook Marketplace or eBay or whatever, message them and say, hey, show me the clock speeds. What's the CPU actually running at? Not what, it, not what it's supposed to do, what it's running at. And uh, be sure that the CPU is not vendor locked if you ever want to, uh, if you ever want to, for example, take it and put it into a larger desktop in the future. You buy a mini PC with a really cool, you know, 10700 uh, CPU, and then you want to move it into a bigger desktop. Well, be careful if it's not the same manufacturer, if it's not the same motherboard, a Dell motherboard, then it literally just may not ever boot, and there's no meaningful way to fix it. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, that's what I took away from the video. Again, if there are any updates and I'm able to get the big HP working, I will post uh, a pinned comment explaining what happened. But for now, those are the results of the video. All right, if you like this video, please give it a like. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out my books. They're all available uh, right now. The link's in the description. And I will see you in the next video.